I'm going to teach you how to name and write the formulas of molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are made of nonmetals, which are strictly on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So I'm not bringing together cations and anions, okay? And so since I'm not bringing together cations and anions, I have to have a different system to help me figure out how many of each atom are present in the formula. So if we go to the next page, on the next page they give you a table. This table is also on your periodic table, okay? So I don't know if you want to highlight where it says one mono down to 10 deca in another color so that it stands out to you, but we use these Greek prefixes mono to deca when we're doing um, molecular compounds, okay? So let me explain. Mono is only used when you have one oxygen. Okay? The rest we use all the time. And we put them in front of the names of the nonmetal. Okay? So we're going to name the nonmetal. If there's more than one, then we put the prefix in front of it. And then we name the second nonmetal because we'll have two stuck together. We use the prefix in front of it if needed. And then we change the ending of the second nonmetal to I. So let me give you an example. Here I have xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon and fluorine are both nonmetals. They're on the right hand side of the periodic table. Xenon is XE. Tetra stands for four. So this means I have four fluorines. So fluorine is F, and then you would put a four after the F. Notice they changed the ending of the second nonmetal to ide. They didn't change the ending of the first nonmetal. Okay? Okay, so let's come down here to the next one. On the next one, they want to know what the name is of P4S10. Okay, so since we have four phosphorus, then we would put tetra in front of phosphorus, so it's one word. And then I've got 10 sulfurs, 10 is deca. So you would put deca in front of sulfur, and then you would change the ending of sulfur to ide because it's the second nonmetal. So it's tetraphosphorus deca sulfide, okay? Okay, so let's come down to the practice problems. For number one, what would the chemical formula be for nitrogen monoxide? NO. And then the reason why they used one, they used mono here is because I had one oxygen. Okay, otherwise we will never use it. For B, I have nitrogen dioxide. What would that chemical formula be? NO2. NO2. Okay. C, dinitrogen tetroxide. N2O4, perfect. Now I want to make a note here that tetraoxide would be considered the improper way to spell that. And then D, dinitrogen trioxide. N2O3, perfect. Okay, let's take a look at number two. PCl5 would be phosphorus. We don't use mono because we only use mono with one oxygen. And then I have five chlorines. This would be pentachloride. And then B, 
I have one sulfur, so this would just be sulfur. I have two oxygens, so this would be dioxide. What would C be? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. What would D be? Good job. Yeah. Diphosphorus. Make sure you don't write penta oxide. It's just pent oxide. You always omit the A. I think so. I can't think of an exception. Okay. Okay. So now what I want you to do. Okay. We're going to move on to hydrates, which are just ionic compounds that have water attached to them. Okay. So hydrates are not on the lab. However, in your packet, the next worksheet is hydrates and molecular compounds. Okay. So it's just a mix of those two. So after this, all I have to teach you are acids, and then we're done with chapter two. Okay, so just hang with me for a little bit longer. Um, let's talk about these hydrates. Okay, so ionic compounds with water attached are hydrates. Okay. And you know that ionic compounds are salts. So that means these are just salts that contain water. And we just call them hydrates. Now, we can actually remove the water from the salt really, really easily. And you do that by gently heating it in a Bunsen burner. So gently warming a salt will remove the water from the crystal. And once the water is removed, we call it an anhydrous salt. And that means without water, okay? Some salts that don't have water attached to them will actually absorb water from the air. So um, these are known as uh, uh, desiccants. So you may see these in little tiny pouches um, of like shoe boxes or a guitar um, storage container. And so these are often used to just keep the air dry, around the product and um, they often say do not eat on them okay and if you work in a lab they usually have like a glass airtight container that contains these types of salts for keeping certain things dry okay let's take a look at the next page Let's jump straight into the practice problems. So here you're gonna notice these are all ionic compounds and then they say hydrate at the end or they have water in the chemical formula. They use Greek prefixes to indicate how many waters are attached. So let me give you an example. This first one is barium chloride dihydrate. So barium is Ba plus two, chloride is Cl minus one, so the chemical formula here would be BaCl2, and then this dihydrate means there are two waters attached. So you put a little dot that looks like a little multiplication symbol, and then after it, you would write 2H2O, done. Okay, for the next one, sodium carbonate monohydrate. Okay, sodium is Na plus one, Carbonate is CO3 minus 2. This chemical formula would be Na2CO3. Mono means 1, so I have one water attached. We wouldn't put the number 1 in front of the water. You would simply put one water after it. Okay? Let's come down to number 2. For number 2, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the cobalt and the iron because we actually have to calculate the charges on those metals before we do anything. So here I have two chlorines at a negative one. So when I multiply these together, this is a negative two. So that means I need a positive two on the other side. I have one cobalt, that means the charge must be two. So this would be cobalt 
Roman numeral two because of this charge on the metal. And then chloride is attached. And then I have six waters. The Greek prefix for six is hexa. So this would be hexahydrate. Okay, and if this was something that you were putting into Canvas, I just want to emphasize the fact that it would be cobalt with the space, the parenthesis, two capital I's, close the parenthesis, space, chloride, space, hexahydrate is one word. Okay, and capitalizations don't matter. Yeah. How would we put like the dot? The dot, I think on Canvas, I tell you to put a star. So it's like all in a row. So this would be something like Na2CO3 star H2O. Okay. All right. So let's do B and then we're done with these hydrates. So for B, I've got three chlorines at a negative one. This is a negative three when you multiply it. I need a positive three on the other side. One iron would be a plus three charge like this. So this is iron, Roman numeral three because of the charge on the metal, chloride. And then I have four waters, four is tetra. So this would be tetrahydrate. Yes, okay. Now, do you feel like you need practice on hydrates and 